righteous, you're holy, you are awesome, you're faithful. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. Gracious, understanding, God. You are an amazing God, and we just want to give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Continue to worship. He alone is worthy. Despite everything that's happening, he still reigns. He rules. He's sovereign. He can do anything but fail. And I just want to say thank you, God, for saving us, for rescuing us. Even when we don't see it, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Savior, so my soul cried out to you. I was lost in need of a Savior, so my soul cried out to you. Come on, help me say, I was lost in need of a Savior.
He protects us, oh yeah. to do it every single moment of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship him. He alone is worthy. He alone is faithful, yes. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. You are my strength. You are my strength. 
Come on, right there at home. We want to welcome in our e-campus on this morning. Good morning, Breakthrough Church. My goodness, what a worship experience. Come on, right in this moment, all of our guests, we want to welcome you to the moment that changes everything. Welcome to Breakthrough Church Life right there at home. I dare you to lift your hands up and just begin to worship the Lord. Come on. Come on. You are my strength. My goodness, I feel, I feel the spirit of worship, y'all. Because all we're trying to say is that you rescued me. You rescued me. Come on, praise and worship. You rescued me. Come on, y'all know how we do. You we gotta rock out. Me. You rescue me. You rescue me. You rescue me. Oh, you rescue me. You rescue me. Come on, you that's all we're trying to say. Me. When you I was stuck in a horrible pit. Come on, you rescued me. You I need a 
about a hundred praises. Come on, jump on your feet and rock out.
joining Breakthrough Church Live. Welcome to the moment that changes everything. We are excited to have you on this morning. We want to give a big shout out to our eCampus, to all of our first time guests, those that are in the chat room. Make sure you give our guests some love. Welcome to the, to the moment that changes everything. We are excited to have you on this morning. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, share this worship experience with somebody you know who needs it. Trust me, it is going to change your life. What a worship experience on this morning. My goodness, how many enjoyed worship? How many know and believe? Lord, you rescued me. You rescued me. Right in this moment, we're getting ready to get into the word of the Lord, but my goodness, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody just excited to be in the presence of the Lord? I need about a hundred people who can just put those hands together and give God the best praise that you can give him right in this moment. No matter what you're going through, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're dealing with right now, how many know he is worthy of your worship? He is worthy of your praise. It was David that said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I need some all-time praisers. I need those that can praise them whether I'm on the mountain or I'm in the valley. I can still praise you, God. Whether things are good or things are bad, I can still praise you, God. Whether I'm at work or at home, I can still praise you. Come on, whether people like me or not, I'm, I can still praise you. Come on, whether they friend me or not, come on, I can still praise you. I need some believers who can still praise them. That I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what's happening in my life, God, I'm going to praise you. No matter how bad it gets, I'm going to praise you. If it gets worse before it gets better, I'm going to praise you. Come on, if friends walk out on me, I'm going to praise you. If people talk about me, I'm going to praise you. If I lose my job, I'm going to praise you. Come on, I need some folk who is declaring on this morning that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you. We praise you. Right there at home, just lift those hands. Father, we are ready to receive a word on today. We believe that you have a word that's going to absolutely change our life. Father God, we are ready to receive on today. Prepare our hearts and our minds. You said in the word that when the seed of your word falls on good ground, that it would bring forth harvest. So let the seed of your word fall on good ground on today. That those that are watching and listening to this word, that their life will never be the same again. Let the word impact us in such a way, God, that we can't help but live better. We can't help but to serve you, God. So, Father, we thank you right now for the power of your word. Holy Spirit, have your way. I decrease that you may increase. Speak through my mouth and think through my mind. God, let it be all of you and none of me right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we are in this series, Expectations. We're expecting the great God. God, we stand in your presence with expectations, God. We praise you with expectations. We worship you with expectations, God. Knowing, God, that you are faithful, God. That if you said it, then you're going to do it, God. That you can do abundantly, exceedingly beyond what we can ask or think. God, we declare that you are not a man that shall lie, but you are a man of your word. We declare it, God, that your promises are yes and amen. That you are faithful, that promise, God. That if you said it, then nothing can change it, God. We declare that what you speak spoke in and over our life shall not cannot and will not fail we declare it right now in the name of Jesus God we stand in your presence with expectations that with you all things are possible we declare God that eyes have not seen heirs have not heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that you have prepared and in store for us God we declare that now God in the name of Jesus we tap into the spirit right in this moment I wish I had about a hundred worshipers who would just lift those hands and open your spirit and say God you do it you have your way God go beyond my expectations God I declare it now in the name of Jesus God that if you said I can have it then I can have it if you said I can do it then I can do it if you said I can live more 
abundantly. I declare it now, Lenny. Oh, I wish I had a thousand worshipers who believe the word of God that what he spoke over your life will not fail, but it shall come to pass. Come on, how many know it's going to happen? It's going to happen. What he said is going to happen. We declare it, God. We believe it's done. Oh, Rabba said it is we declare it's done now in Jesus name if you believe that put those hands together right at home come on those that are with me on today just put those hands together bless him amen what a move of God I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord I thank God for all of those that are tuning in on this morning our e-campus we want to thank you again all of our guests thank you don't forget amen chat comment leave some comments that's important subscribe like and share amen this worship online worship experience with somebody uh, trust me it's going to change your life what a worship experience on today my goodness I feel the spirit of worship we're getting ready to get in the word but I'm so excited we are starting a brand new series today called expectations expect the great how many declare you got some expectations Come on, that's right. If you come in the presence of God without expectations, then you might as well not even come into his presence. I don't know about you, but I live a life with expectations that what God said that he is going to do. And anybody believe that? Let me let me just prophesy for a few minutes. Amen. That what God spoke in and over your life will not, shall not, and cannot fail. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what your bank account looks like. I don't care what your business looks like. I don't care what's going on in your house. What God has spoken in and over your life cannot shall not and will not fail I wish I had 50 people who would just comment and hashtag that it will not fail it will not fail it can't fail I know it feels like things are going backwards I know it's getting worse before it gets better my goodness I feel this on this morning amen I know it feels like things are getting worse before they're getting better but I need 50 people who believe who has who says pastor I have expectations I believe that God is able to do abundantly exceedingly beyond what I can ask or think. I'm not basing it on how I feel, but I'm basing it on what I know, that my God is able. How many know he's able? He's able. So I'm excited about this new series, Expectations. Expect the great. Grab your Bibles, grab your tablets, Acts chapter 3. Amen. We're going to kind of dig into this text on today and why you're getting that Amen. We just want to honor the woman of the house, my girl, our first lady, Lady Carr. We thank God for the woman of God. We thank God for all of our staff. Amen. Our praise and worship team, our band, all of our audio, our media team. Amen. All those, our elders, our deacons, our security, those that make every week impossible. We can't do it without you. So we thank you, staff, for doing an amazing job. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful for an amazing team here at Breakthroughs. Somebody just hashtag that team breakthrough. That's right. Put it in the comments. Put it in the chat. Team breakthrough. Hashtag it. That's right. Amen. Teamwork makes the dream work. How many believe that? How many understand that? when we can come together amen as a as a unified team there is nothing that we cannot do we can do come on how many know it's better together amen so we give God praise for an amazing team grab that text grab that text we're getting ready to go there in just a few seconds amen but I just want to encourage you on today amen to continue to stay focused this is our 90 days of prayer that's right take the challenge amen if you haven't but come on amen you should be praying amen but this is all about taking our prayer life to the next level 90 days for the next three months October November and December amen we are taking our prayer life to another level pastor what do you mean I mean all I'm saying is that we're going to add more time of prayer in our life we're going to make sure that our time with God is quality time we're going to make sure that God is a priority we're going to make sure that when we get up in the morning we're praying before we do anything that when we get before we get in the bed at night amen we're going to seek his face that throughout the day amen I'm going to stay prayerful because I declare I'm developing a praying spirit. Does anybody believe that right there in that moment? Somebody say, Pastor, I take the challenge. 90 days. Amen. I believe this, that if you can get your prayer life to the next level, then your life will go to the next level. Anybody believe that? My goodness, I catch hold to that. If you can get your prayer life to the next level, your life will go to the next level. See, some of you are trying to get your bank account to the next level, your career to the next level, but it's not until you get your prayer life to the next level that everything else in your life will begin to come in alignment with the divine will of God oh my goodness I wish I had some help on today somebody who believed this somebody who says pastor 
I take the challenge. 90 days. Join us. Every Wednesday in October, we'll be fasting corporately as a church. Every Wednesday, from sunup to sundown, one meal after 5 p.m., I need everyone to connect with us every Wednesday in the month of October. We are going to see shackles be broken. Come on. We are going to see chains be broken in our life. Anybody just want to see breakthrough in your life? I'm ready to see some things happen in my life. Jesus told us some things will never happen until you fast. There are some strongholds that will never be broken until you commit yourself to fasting. There are some things that will never get in line in your life until you commit yourself to fasting. So partner with us every Wednesday in the month of October. Join us as, a, as we join, as we seek God's face and we turn down our plate, amen, so that God can have his way, amen. Let's go to the text. They're getting ready to put it on the screen for you. Acts chapter 3. We want to look at verses 1 uh, through 10 on today and we're just going to kind of walk through this text and, and get an understanding. of Acts chapter 3 beginning at verse 1. It says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms, to beg from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have but what I do I have give I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk my goodness did anybody catch that and Peter said silver and gold I do not have but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk my goodness I feel that prophetic word for about a hundred people that this is your season to rise up and walk my goodness can I just plug that in can I give you a message within the message somebody on a hashtag that rise up and walk that this is your season to rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength so he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him I got to bring your attention to verse 5 it says so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them expecting to receive something from from them. I want to use simply as a text today, raise your expectations. Oh, raise your expectations. Somebody just hashtag that. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. Send it. Text about three people and just tell them, raise your expectations. I need you to text somebody you know who's down, who the enemy been trying to beat up, who depression is trying to hang over. I need you to text them right now in this moment and tell them to raise your expectations. I know what the doctor says, but raise your expectations. I know what the bank account looks like, but raise your expectations. I know what the test results came back, but raise your expectations I know I know the job shut down but raise your expectations I know folks are on your last nerve but raise your expectations my goodness I wish I had a hundred people who would catch hold to this word and say I'm in a season where I gotta raise my expectations that I cannot have low expectations but I gotta raise my expectations because my God is able to do abundantly exceedingly beyond what I can ask or think Oh, I wish somebody would declare it. Open your mouth and say, Lord, help me to raise my expectations. Help me to believe, God. Help me to stand on your word, Father. Raise your expectations. There's a danger in having low expectations. But God is requiring us in this season to raise your expectations. Man, I feel this word. This is such a personal word for me. Because over the last eight months, God has been challenging my expectations. There's times that God says, why are you thinking so small? Why, why are you stuck in a box? Why, why are you putting me in a box? 
Why, why are you putting limits on me as if I can't go beyond what you can think or ask? Why, why, why when, 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 when you're presented with, with a number and what this is going to cost, do you start scratching your head? Am I not able to do abundantly and exceedingly beyond what you can ask or think? Am, am I not the God that meets expectations? Am I not the God that exceeds expectations? Am I not the God that, that, that brought you out and not just brought you out but that brought you in? Am I not the God who did abundantly and exceedingly for you that when you asked me for one thing I did another thing just to prove to you that I was your God oh I need some believers who said pastor I feel that because I was praying for this but God did that he went beyond what I can ask or think it's your season to raise your expectations there's a danger in having low expectations and for some of us, the problem is our expectations are too low. And we're going to unpack this text on today. And my goodness, we're going to learn something from a lame man. Somebody say a lame man. We're going to learn something. Acts chapter 3, my goodness, this is one of my favorite texts. And I know, I know I say that about every text. But this is one of my favorite texts because it is, such, it is so full of prophetic purpose. It is so full of so many principles that if we're not careful, we'll miss them. It's not just the story of a lame, a lame man who, who, who was healed and then, and then can walk. No, but it's a story of a man who was living a certain kind of life. A man who was making the best out of a bad situation. A man, the Bible tells us, who had been lame from his mother's womb. A man that never knew what it was to walk. A man that never experienced walking ever in his life from his mother's womb, he was lame. He did not have the ability of his legs. So from his mother's womb to where he is now in life, a grown man, he never knew what it was to walk. Man, wouldn't it be something if, if at least maybe he just... He had the first five years of his life and he learned how to walk and something happened tragic and lost. At least he would have the memory of walking. At least he would know what the feeling felt like to move around by himself. Am I talking to anyone who can understand the layman who says, Pastor, my legs work, but I know what it is to be immobilized. I know what it feels like to be. See, some of us are stuck in our lameness. Oh, I know you thought that it was just lameness was just for somebody who didn't have the activities of their limbs. But I believe that some of us have been experiencing lameness in our life. The inability to move, being stuck. My goodness, is this good? his mother's womb all he's ever known was being lame my goodness it would be one thing if he had a little season of walking at least he can remember what it was like but all he has ever seen is lameness and if all you ever seen was lameness then you often don't develop an appetite for wholeness he was stuck so much in lameness that he never developed a hunger to walk. He just settled for somebody picking him up every morning, bringing him to the temple and dropping him off at the gate every day. Man, can I plug this in right there? The truth is this, that some of us, we've been stuck in lameness so long that we have not developed an appetite for wholeness. You've been broken so long that brokenness has become your normal. And because it's your normal, you've never developed an appetite to be whole. Matter of fact, the devil's been telling you the whole time that you'll never be whole, that you'll never be normal, that things will never be the same again, that you'll never recover. But I'm talking to 50 people right now who need to declare that the season of lameness is over in my life, that I'm getting up, that I'm tired of being stuck, but I want to be healed and I want to be whole. My goodness, is this good? Because of his lameness, he never developed an appetite for wholeness. If all you've seen is poverty, if all you've seen is domestic violence, then you begin to build your life around dysfunction. Can, can I preach this for a minute? That there's some of us right now that we have built our life around dysfunction. 
We have built our life around what we think is normal. It's confusion, it's chaos, it's drama, but we become, it's become our new normal and we built our life around dysfunction and we think it's normal. So when people come into our dysfunction, they're trying to figure out how are you living like this? How are you living in this? Because this is not normal. But because you no know, desire to be whole and the enemy has confused your mind and told you you can never have better, you begin to settle for what only what you've been exposed to. And then you only become attracted to what you've been exposed to. Can, can I plug this in right here? This is why some of you singles, this is why you keep dating wrong. Because you keep dating the person that you've been exposed to. You keep getting in the wrong relationships because you keep looking for the wrong person because that's, that's what you become accustomed to. This has become your, your, your normal and because it's your normal, you keep getting in the wrong relationships. And I, you, I know you say, I'm not going to date nobody like that no more, but eh, no matter how much you say that, you still come around and you end up dating somebody that you said you would never date. Why? Because you built your life around dysfunction. And the enemy has sold you this lie that you can't have better. I come to tell you that you can have abundant, uh, you can have life and have it abundantly. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That you can be loved. That you don't got to be in an abusive relationship to, to, to feel loved. That you don't got to be with somebody who don't really love you and treat you wrong just to make, just to make you feel good. That just so you can have somebody to lay next to at night. No, 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 no. You can have better. Somebody ought to hashtag that right now. You can have better. There's better. Somebody say, raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. And for, money, for many of us, this is how we have lived our life. You, we've, we've been attracted to what we've been exposed to. We have lived our life in lameness. Amen. He was lame from his mother's womb. And anytime you have been lame all your life, broke all your life, quiet all your life, intimidated all your life, insecure all your life, angry all your life, surrounded by angry, vicious people all your life, you develop a norm around a nasty situation. My goodness. Has your nasty become normal? Can I plug that in right there? I know some couples who live in a, in a dysfunctional home, but their dysfunction have become normal arguing and fighting every week has become normal. Never having peace in the house has become normal. It's become that is not normal church. Amen. You have built, amen, a life around dysfunction. And I don't know about you, but Jesus died so that the dysfunction in my life can be broken. Jesus shed his blood so that I can be whole again. That I don't got to walk around as a man broken and insecure. Amen. Insufficient. Amen. Because of my daddy issues and my mama issues and, and my self issues. I don't have to walk around being broken but I can be healed and I can be whole that I don't have to stay in my lameness that my nasty doesn't have to become my normal my goodness raise your expectations he was lame all his life so he built a routine around his disability a routine is what you build around what you think you can't change. So the lame man, every day, got his cup. And what's sad is that he actually recruited people who picked him up every day, carried him, carried him from wherever he was living to the gate called Beautiful. <sighs> Isn't this an oxymoron? He has an ugly issue, but he's in a beautiful place. Man, can I help some folk out right now who says, Pastor, I got some ugliness, but there's some beauty around me. Every day they brought him and they sat him at the gate called Beautiful. And they left him. Lady Card, you mean to tell me nobody who brought him there ever told him that he could have a better life? That he could have a different life. That there's a God who can heal him. 
I mean, the, the heaven people, I mean, the people around him had to know about Jesus and had to see the miracles of Jesus. I mean, Jesus just, just was crucified. It wasn't long. Amen. The, 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 the residue of Jesus was st still around. Every day they dropped him off. And he would beg. And he would just hope somebody would put something in his cup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what was funny is that he collected coins, but it was never enough to fix his dysfunction. He collected coins, but it was never enough to encourage him to come out of his lameness. Am I helping 50 people right now? And he sat begging. And he sat begging. And the Bible said he sat expecting something. You know it's bad when you're so stuck in your dysfunction that you expect people to contribute to your dysfunction. That you expect people to be okay with your dysfunction. That you expect people to pat you on your back and have sympathy for your dysfunction. I don't want people around me who's going to sympathize my dysfunction. But I need some people around me who's going to tell me that I don't have to stay in the place that I'm in. That all I got to do is raise my expectations. That I can't sit here with my cup expecting somebody to give to my need. I don't need people around me that are going to contribute to my dysfunction. And I can't build routine around my disability. For many of you, let me help you right there. You've built a routine around your disability. This is why you love being sick. This is why you love for something to go on with your life. You're the one that loves just to call and say, I'm in the hospital. Oh, I'm going getting surgery. I'm doing this. Why? Because you have, you have built a routine around your disability. You love attention. The truth is you lack attention. That's why you try to do things to get attention. Oh, am I helping? I know, I know this is some sharp word. I know this is some truth, but that's the truth. For, I'm going to help free some of you. Stop trying to get attention by doing the wrong thing. Amen. Get God's attention amen give him a praise in spite of it bless him in spite of it nobody's gonna put anything in your cup no more my cup my cup but pastor but pastor but pastor but pastor I, I was abused I was abused I was abused they they talked about me, Pastor. They left me. I was abandoned. I was rejected. My daddy left me. I never knew who he was. My mother, amen, was strung out on drugs and she never loved me like she was supposed to. Oh my goodness, join the club. Everybody got a story. But I'm telling you, I need 50 people who says, Pastor, this is my season to raise my expectations. I can't live low no more. I can't stay low no more. Depression cannot be my routine. Sickness cannot be my routine. Come on, sadness cannot be my routine. I got my cup, my cup. And here it is, the man who built a routine around his disability, sitting in a place called beautiful with an ugly issue. Oh, my goodness. Can I help free some of you? Can I talk to my women for a minute? Women, th this is the truth for many of you. You are beautiful. But because there is ugliness in you, you can't see your beauty. So, so, so for my singles, you try to hook up with somebody who, who try to tell you and convince you that you're beautiful because you don't believe it. But what you got to understand is that every believer, we're in a place called beautiful with ugly issues. But the difference is that I refuse to build life around my ugly issues. I refuse to build a routine around my ugly issues. I refuse to let my disability become my lifestyle. I refuse to let what, what, what hurt me, amen, hinder me. Am I talking to anybody? I refuse to have people bring me to the same place every day. The man that was lame, he was begging. He was begging everybody who was going into the temple to give. Matter of fact, the Bible said he was expecting something, but he never expected his healing. My goodness. See, sometimes somebody, sometimes your expectations are off. 
See, he's expecting something for his cup, but he never expected nothing for his legs. My goodness, am I helping 50 people out right there? See, you're so focused on one thing that you forgot about the, the whole thing. I don't want just God to heal this area of my life, but I want him to heal my whole life. I don't want him just to touch my mind, but I want him to heal my soul. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Help me out. Help me out in this. The Bible says that they brought him there every day. Every day was the same thing. Everything was the same cycle. Every day was the same cycle. The same cycle every day. I need some folk who feel like you've been trapped in a cycle. Like, it don't matter if you change your clothes, if you change your hair, if you put on a different pair of shoes, but it's like this. You end up in the same position every day. It almost feels like you're cursed at times. Can I talk to some true believers who says, Pastor, I feel that word because every time I take two steps forward, it feels like I'm thrown back four steps. Amen. It feels like I keep ending up in the same place that no matter how much I praise them and how much I do good, I keep ending up in the same place. I'm telling you that it's sure time that it's your season that God is coming and he is moving you out of that place I know what some of you say pastor I've been praying I've been I've been fasting I, I've been praising I've been I've been worshiping but it still seems like I end up in the same place I tried new jobs but I still end up in the same place I got into relationships, but I still end up in the same place. I, I, I try to change how I look, but I end up in the same place. Why? Because God wants to make you whole again. For many of us, we're not whole. Pastor, what do you mean I'm not whole? My hair is in place. I look good. My nails are done. No, 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 no. That's your exterior. But for many of us, we've worked on our exterior, but at the neglect of our interior. Oh, let me say that again. We worked on our exterior at the neglect of our interior. Amen. God is not concerned about the outside. The word says that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. So the whole time that you are trying to do a total makeover on the outside, you have neglected your heart. You have neglected at your souls. You have forgot about the soul ties that you never disconnected from. You forgot about the people you slept with and the sex you had out of marriage. You forgot about the things that you have entangled yourself with and you're trying to figure out, Pastor, why am I still empty? I fixed the exterior. I, I, I look pretty good. I lost some weight. All of that doesn't matter until you let Jesus fix your heart, until you let him heal your soul. Somebody shout, Lord, heal my soul. Heal my soul, God. I don't want to show up to the same place begging. I don't want to show up to the same place with the same expectations. I don't want to build a routine around my disability. For some of you, that's all your life has been about. It's about crutches. Everything that has ever happened to you, you use it as a crutch. And your crutches have become excuses. My goodness, is this good. The Bible said that every day, every day, somebody say the cycle is broken. Can I just stay there for a minute? Somebody let the devil know the cycle is broken. I'm not going to live another day depressed. I'm not going to live another day angry. I'm not going to live another day mad. I'm not going to live another day dis disappointed. I'm not going to live another day discouraged. I'm not going to go through the cycle again. But I declare by the power of Jesus that the cycle is broken. Every day. Every day it was the same cycle. They brought him there and they dropped him in the same place. Ugly issue at a place called beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still lame, but thank you. Let me, let me plug this in. You'll never be able to raise your expectations if you're around people who are okay with your having low expectations. If you hang around people who let you stay down, you'll always stay down. You notice how everybody who walked by put something in his cup, but nobody ever told the lame man that he can do better for himself. 
Nobody ever told them that though. Just because you don't have the activities of the leg don't mean you can't have a life. Am I helping some people? Can I talk to 50 people who says, Pastor, I'm a witness to this. I lost some stuff, but I'm still living my best life. People left me, but I'm still living my best life. They walked out on me, but I'm still living my best life. I've been through pain, but I'm still living the abundant life. Do I have any witnesses on today that says, Pastor, I know what it is to be lame. I know what it is to be immobilized, but I also know what it is to live, that I don't have to stay stuck. Somebody shall raise your expectations. The Bible says that Peter and John Peter and John came by. Peter and John came by. I said Peter and John, y'all. But what I really mean is that relationship came by. Peter and John is relationship. Because up to now, while he was sitting at the gate of the temple, all he was dealing with was religion. And religion, religion, I said religion, Religion was babysitting his lameness. Religion was contributing to his lameness. This is why we don't want religion. We want relationship because religion will let you stay low. Religion will make you stay in bondage. But I need some folk who want relationship. Peter and John is relationship. Relationship is coming. Up to this point, the lameness, the lame man only knew religion. Isn't it crazy that church people, church people was passing by, putting something in his cup every day. Church people, people who should have known how to pray, people who should have known how to lay hands on them, people who should have had the, the ability to say uh, that I serve the God of miracles, that he's a miracle worker. But every day church people, people who were supposed to know God, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you for your coins. Thank you for your change. All the money he was collecting did not contribute to his lameness. He was still lame. Because religion can't fix what relationship can heal. Oh my goodness, am I helping 50 people who says that when I fell in love with Jesus, my whole life changed. That when I gave my life to Jesus, my whole life changed. That when I gave my heart to Jesus, everything in my life began to change. My lameness began to change. My brokenness began to change. My disability began to change. The Bible says that Peter and John comes by. And relationship shows up. Follow me. Follow me. The text is good. It gets better. Peter tells the lame man to look. Look, look, look. Look at me. Look at me. And so the lame man looks at Peter, expecting to receive something. I love Peter. I love Peter and John because they say this. They say, silver and gold have I not. But what I have I give to you. Can I, can I just give you an understanding about this text? Let me tell you something. Peter and John had money. It's not that they didn't have silver and gold because they had it. You know how I know they had it? Because they was going in the temple to worship. And part of worship is giving. So they had some money to give, but they wasn't going to contribute to his lameness. So they said, silver and gold have I not. But what I have, I give to you. I don't have money, but I got relationship. I don't got money, but I got the blood of Jesus. I don't got money, but I got miracle. And the Bible says this. Silver and gold have I not. But what I have, I give to you. I love what they said. They didn't pray for him. They didn't lay hands on him, elder. All they said is rise up and walk. They didn't put their hands on them. They didn't say in Jesus' name. Somebody say, why they didn't pray, Pastor? They didn't pray because they didn't want that if God did not heal them when he prayed, that he would have an excuse to blame God. So they just commanded him to get up and walk. Am I helping 50 people? Peter and John says, rise up and walk. Put down your cup. 
Your cup is your crutch. Your cup is your handicap. Who am I talking to on today? Who need to put down your cup? Put down your crutch. Put down everything that you've been using as an excuse. God says raise your expectations. See if I will not open the windows of heaven. See if I will not do abundantly, exceedingly, beyond what you can think. Somebody say rise up and walk. The man puts down his cup. He puts away the crutches. I need 50 people to hear me. God is saying this is the season to put away the excuses. Put away the excuses. Stop being the victim and be the victor. Stop using what happened in your childhood as an excuse. Stop using the abuse as an excuse. Stop losing the pain as an excuse. God said to tell me, tell, send me to tell you to rise up and walk. The Bible says that the lame man who had been lame from his mother's womb got up. Got up. Could you imagine how he felt getting up for the first time? Oh, I wish I had a hundred people who said, this is my season to get up. This is my season to get up. I've been down long enough. Depression has been keeping me down long enough. Rise up and walk. Raise your expectations. Bring your belief. Bring your faith to another level. He gets up for the first time in his life. And, and this is what I love about this text because when he got up, Elder, the Bible says he got up, he started walking, he started dancing, he started praising. Because he said this, for years, I watched people go into the gate. I watched people go where I wanted to be. I watched people go to the Holy of Holies. I watched people praise him and I couldn't do nothing. Who am I talking to who says, Pastor, the season is over for me watching. I'm tired of watching other people be blessed. I'm tired of watching other people be healed. I'm getting up. I'm walking in to my blessing. I'm walking in to my new season. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Somebody shout, get up. I'm tired of, I'm tired of seeing other people go where I want to be. And I'm not saying that in a, I'm not saying that as a hater. I'm just saying why can I, why should I sit down and sit back and watch everybody else be blessed? When I stay in my lameness, when God serve a God who is able, when I serve a God of expectations, that if I can believe it, then I can have it. If I can dream it, then I can be it. Who am I talking to? You better raise your expectations. Stop living low. Stop having low expectations. Stop thinking that God cannot do. My God is able. Able. Get up. Breakthrough church, get up. Get up. Get up from your brokenness. Get up from your hurt. Get up from depression. Get up from being angry. Get up. Get up. Rise up and walk. Live the life that God has called you to live. Jesus said that I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. My goodness. Come on, give him praise right in this moment. I need 50 people to bless him. 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 Yeah. Somebody say, I'm changing spots. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm 
not staying in depression. I'm not staying in brokenness. But I'm raising my expectations. Come on, bless it. Your expectations. Praise him. Talking to 50 people who've been stuck in anger. Some of y'all, so you've made a routine of complaining. You, you made a routine of being mad. I don't even know what a smile looked like on some of y'all faces. Because you done made a routine out of it. God says, change the spot. Change your spot. Get up, rise up, and walk. Raise your expectations. My God is too great for me to live low. There's a danger in having low expectations. There's a danger in believing that where you are, you'll always be. I need 50 people who says, Pastor, where I am right now, come see me next week because I won't be here. Come see me in another day because I won't be here. I'm raising my expectations. Get up. Get up. Rise up. Break the church. Rise up. Walk. Raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. My goodness, what a word. I'm letting go of my cup. I'm getting rid of the crutches. I'm not living low anymore. I, I need to share this with about 100 people. Every time you go back into bondage, you lower your expectations. My God is the bondage breaker. My God is the chain breaker. My God is the miracle worker. There is nothing too hard for my God. All you got to do sometimes is get up. Get up from where you are. I know you had a rough week. I, I know things seem like they're falling apart. But all you got to do is make a decision to get up. That I refuse to stay low. I refuse to stay down. I need a hundred people who's with me on today to say, Pastor, I'm not staying down. Some things popped off this week, but I'm not staying down. Things got worse before they got better, but I'm refused to stay down. I'm getting up. I'm raising my expectations. The Bible says that the lame man got up. He began to walk. He began to dance. He began to praise him. I'm glad that he had enough sense to praise him. I'm glad that he had enough. I just wish 50 people would praise him. Praise him for what, Pastor? Because God is taking you out of your lameness. Because God is breaking you out of your dysfunction. Because God is allowing you to put down the cup. Because God is bringing you into a season where now you have the freedom to live again. Who am I talking to that needed to hear this word? That God says that I'm giving you the freedom. I'm giving you the privilege. I'm giving you a license to live again. I know you lost some people over the eight months. I know you lost some loved ones. I know some things have left you. But God says, I'm giving you a license to live. The Bible says that the lame man followed Peter and John into the temple, praising him and worshiping God. The Bible says that the people saw him and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the lame man who sits at the gate every day, the gate called beautiful with his ugly issue. The lame man, the lame man who we've been contributing to his lameness is now walking. Why? Because finally, relationship showed up. And it's relationship that changed his life. Silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give to you. My goodness, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I love this. I love this right there. Because I love that Peter and John didn't ask him, does he want to walk? 
I'm glad they didn't ask him, do you want to be better? They didn't give him a chance to deny his wholeness. They commanded him to get up and walk. I don't know who this is for, but God is not giving you an option. He's commanding you to live. He's commanding you to raise your expectations. You can't keep living in a low place when you serve such a great God. My goodness, is that good? For some of you, your, low, your expectations are too low. You go through things and you just let things weigh on you and you hold things because you don't believe that God is able or God loves you enough that he can bring you through some stuff. That when things happen to you, you let what happened to you suck you into this place because you don't have enough ability to believe that God is able. I need 50 people on today to, on, to know and hear my voice and to know that he is able. He is able. I don't care what you're going through, he's able. Somebody ought to hashtag that in the chat right now. He is able. Somebody ought to text five people right now that you know that need to hear this word and tell them he's able. He's able. They may be sitting in a hospital bed, but somebody ought to tell them he's able. They may have just lost their job, but somebody ought to tell them he's able. He's able. Raise your expectations. My goodness, what a word on today. I want to say this, if you're watching this live stream on today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, right here in this moment, if you're ready to follow Jesus, all you got to do is say, simply say this, say, Jesus, come into my life and save me. I realize I'm a sinner in need of grace, but today I accept your will for my life. Say, Jesus, I believe you died for me, you rose for me, and you're coming back for me. And I declare today, I'm saved. In Jesus' name. If you decided to follow Jesus on today, we want to welcome you to God's family right there on the screen. Amen. If you decided to follow Jesus, all you got to do is text Jesus to the number there. And our follow-up team is going to follow up with you. We want to make sure that we stay connected to you. Amen. That we stay connected to you. My goodness, how good is this? Amen. How many enjoyed the word on today? Somebody just shout that. Raise your expectations. Right there at home, eCampus, lift those hands. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for allowing this word to change our life, change our perspective. Father, we made a decision on today. We're putting down our cup. We're letting go of the crutch. And we're rising up. We're walking. We're raising our expectations. Father God, you're too, you're, you're too much of a great God for us to live low. Jesus, you said that you came that we can have life and have it more abundantly. I declare right now that I can have the abundant life, that I can live better, that I can have better, that I can have a marriage, God, that blesses you, that I can have a family that honors you, God. I declare this now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you for allowing it to penetrate our hearts. We receive it now. We believe it's done. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for you on today. Somebody just shout, raise your expectations right in there in this moment. Come on, Ben, help me out. Can we just give God some worship right in that moment? I declare right now that yokes are being destroyed and shackles are being broken. I declare lameness has to go. Come on, in the name of Jesus, everything that's been trying to cripple you, everything that's been trying to hold you back, I declare is being broken now in the name of Jesus right in this moment. Come on, our, our first lady's coming. Amen, as she's coming, I need about a hundred worshipers. Just worship. Come on, just worship him. Just worship him right in this moment. Come on. Come on, Lord, we worship him. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My goodness, I feel that lady car. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I need a hundred people right now who believe, who got expectations to believe that I can be whole again. That what hurt me, what damaged me, what broke me, the blood of Jesus can make me whole again. I believe that a hundred people needed to hear that word on today. Because you have built your life around your dysfunction. Because you think that you can't have better. Nothing but the blood. 
of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Somebody ought to declare that from my childhood issues, from my daddy issues, from my mama issues. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Come on, for my insecurities, my insufficiencies. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. My goodness, I feel my healing coming. I don't got to stay in depression. I don't got to stay in defeat. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody bless them right in this moment. I declare healing. I declare wholeness. Raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. Raise your expectations. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel deliverance coming. Breakthrough is here. Oh! What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My goodness, we gotta go, Lady Carr. But I received that. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. There's power in the blood. The blood, it reaches to the lowest valley. It reaches to the highest mountain. It never loses its power. The blood, the blood. Somebody declare the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Hey. My goodness. but the blood y'all do realize that his blood was shed so that you can be whole again my goodness the band is getting ready to bring a praise and we're getting ready to go out with a praise lady car but right now in this moment it's time to give we're gonna give in a praise is that a right band we're gonna give in a praise right there on the screen the ways to give online breakthroughcd.com cash app text to give we want to thank god for all of our faithful givers on today thank you for all of our partners all of our faithful tithers those that sow consistently into breakthrough church into the vision thank you so much we want to invite our guests to sow a seed if this word blessed you sow into this anointing on today trust me this word is changing the trajectory of your life so sow a seed i'm a firm believer in this lady car when there's an anointing when god gives me a word i gotta sow into this word so break through church let's sow a seed on today it's time to give the ways to give are right there on the screen come on partner with us we get ready to go out in a praise but my goodness how many know it's nothing but the blood of jesus thank you for your giving on today lady car what a what a move of god on today amen don't forget we got a few things don't forget join me Wednesday's word every Wednesday in the month of October if you missed last week's word my goodness prayer 101 part 2 you better watch it trust me I mean God broke it down on soul ties my goodness what a word if you missed it make sure you go back soon as this live stream is over go back and find Wednesday's word amen from October 7th prayer 101 part 2 I'm gonna be with you every Wednesday in the month of October so join us don't forget amen our community tutoring program starts this month amen i believe on the 27th lady car october 27th amen so get your ch children signed up get the information the information is right on the screen just text it amen our team is going to follow up with you amen what a move of god amen what a move of god we're gonna let you go break through church we love you all of our guests e-campus we love you make sure you subscribe like share amen it's right below put a comment in the comment box amen we want to hear from you if the word blessed you let us know amen i'm going home healed i'm going home whole i'm raising my expectations right there lift those hands father we love you we praise you we thank you for a mighty move of god on today we receive your word we declare we're raising 
our expectations. Father, we thank you. We thank you for making us whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We receive it now in Jesus' name. God bless your breakthrough church. See you next weekend.